Hey there, Cayman Climate Champions. Welcome back to a brand new adventure with me, Bella, your climate ranger. Today we are in the amazing Blue Iguana Conservation Facility to learn all about our endemic blue iguanas here in the Cayman Islands. I'm ready to learn something. Are you? Let's go. going to be talking to Field Officer Dylan here at the Blue Iguana facility. Hi Dylan. Hello. Thanks for having us today. Welcome, welcome. Thanks so for coming. We are here today in Peter's Pen, aren't we? Yes, we are. Amazing. And so tell us a little bit about Blue Iguanas, about their physical characteristics and some of their unique features from other iguanas. So with our Blue Iguanas, they have red eyes, black front paws. Normally the end of their tail is a solid black color. Sometimes with some of the Blue Iguanas, they can have black stripes along the side of their body anywhere from like three to five or maybe even none at all. And um, yeah, when it comes to the red eyes, the red eyes, it can help with reducing the sun's glare because they are cold blooded animals and they rely on the sun's heat. So they spend a lot of time basking in the sunlight, absorbing the heat, absorbing the UBV rays. And um, yeah, they're just cool creatures all around to me. And how do they look different maybe from a green iguana? From a green iguana? So when it comes to like, you know, other than the obvious color, the blue and the green, both iguanas can actually adjust their pigmentation to where they go down to a, a dull dark gray color, which helps them absorb the sun's light a lot more. And when it comes to like the spines on the back of their neck, going down the base of their tail, our blue iguanas, the spines are a lot shorter than the green iguanas. Mm. So the green iguanas um, can normally have the spines to be about three times the length. And then also our blue iguanas have very spiky cheeks all around. And um, each, each blue iguana has a unique pattern, kind of like how we have a unique fingerprint that can identify us. And then whereas the green iguanas, they all have like a circular plate on the cheek. These spikes along the side is what I was referring to, mm -hmm. about each of the blue iguanas having their own unique print. So no two spike patterns on the cheeks are going to be the same for the iguanas. And also when it came to the spines on the back of the neck, our blue iguanas, they have rather short spines, and then the green iguanas, and a green iguana this size could have spines somewhere up to this length. Mm -hmm. And they have their little black. Yeah, so we got the black front paws, the black base of the tail, the end of the tail. This brown you see here is actually old dead skin mm -hmm. being ready to shed off. See like that right there? Mm -hmm. So all of this will eventually shed. And then if we had a lot more sunlight, Peter would then adjust his pigmentation to try and reflect some of that light off of him so he would become that nice pretty blue. Cool. But right now he's a duller color trying to absorb as much of the sun's um, heat and UBV rays as possible. Oh, that's really interesting. Hmm? And tell us a little bit about the blue iguana life cycle and a little bit about their reproduction. Blue iguanas are reptiles. They start off from an egg and the adults they breed once a year. Um, the female lays the eggs in the ground, covers them up, she goes about her business, the babies hatch out, and then they pretty much disperse and find their own place out in the wild trying to avoid natural predators and stuff, such as snakes for example. And then uh, we do have invasive species such as cats which can cause an issue. As the iguanas grow and get older, usually around five years of age they start to get that blue color. And then around seven years old they can start to you know, have babies and stuff. So they mate once a year, mm -hmm. and then basically the cycle keeps repeating itself as over the iguanas over get and older and older, yeah, over and over. And do they lay their eggs in the ground or in little burrows? So a female iguana will dig a hole in the ground, make a chamber, lay her eggs in that chamber, and as she's exiting the chamber, she will then cover those eggs back up, making it a natural incubator for the eggs to hatch out in. That's so interesting. I think we're going to go over to the Salina Reserve and check out some of the blue iguanas that live in there. Yep, that's the plan. Let's go. So we are here in the Salina Reserve now, and this is a natural habitat for our blue iguanas. So what is it about this kind of landscape that is so good for blue iguanas? So here within the Salina Reserve, it's a protected area. Humans aren't allowed in here other than us, the staff. And so 
the iguanas, they pretty much have a lot of privacy in here. Um, it's a nice area where they can forage for food. They got decent soily ground that when they decide to burrow to make a home or burrow and make a nest, you know, it's um, easily accessible for them. It's not, for example, too much limestone in, in this area. So yeah, and then um, also too, when the fruit and flowers are in season, there's a decent abundance of food in here that they can forage around for. So what kind of food do they eat? What are the, what, what, what is their main diet? So the blue iguanas, they're omnivores. However, they mainly feed on leaves, fruits, and flowers. But if the occasional insect, you know, appears, something like a caterpillar, maybe even a small crab, different stuff like that, they will feed on them if the opportunity presents itself. Okay. And so your program, so the Blue Iguana Conservation Program, was really important because these species got down to a level where they were critically endangered. And because they lived nowhere else in the Caribbean, it was pretty much crucial that they be brought back, otherwise they wouldn't exist ever again. Mm -hmm. So, with such a world-renowned program, what even caused the threat to them in the first place? So with the blue iguanas, they had... That's a little bird up there. <laughs> so with the blue iguanas, they had the issues of um, habitat loss. You know, humans settling the island. Um, while we were creating our own homes, we were destroying their homes. Mm. And then we brought along invasive species, which also caused an issue. So the iguanas, they do have natural predators, such as the snakes. And um, they, the snakes kind of kept the, the balance in place. But then you have other invasive species, such as, say, for example, feral cats. They can cause an issue. And yeah, just the habitat loss, losing food, losing breeding sites, it um, became very difficult for the iguanas to survive out in the wild. Hmm. And then that's when, you know, we had to step in, make the effort to help them. And since so like around 2002, it brought back up the population to not being endangered. I mean, not being critically endangered, yep. but they're still endangered. And they still face similar threats today. Today, yeah, still today. So the trees that we're surrounded with, blue iguanas, do they climb trees like green iguanas or what do they do? So yes, the blue iguanas can climb trees. They can swim like the green iguanas could. They prefer not to. If a young baby iguana is trying to escape a predator, they might take to the tree. Um, let's just say the area became flooded. They could take to the trees, you know, so that they can remain dry. But yeah, they, they mainly prefer to live their life on the ground. They'd much rather either find an old log to sleep under, find a little cave to hide in, or the more ambitious ones, they would actually dig a burrow in the ground and sleep in that, like what a crab or what a rabbit would do for a home. Oh my gosh, so forests like these are incredibly important then. 100%. To house them and we need to protect our forests too. Yep, and the, the iguanas, they're great seed dispersers, so they help to create the forest as well. They can, you know, make the seeds reach certain areas that, for example, the wind wouldn't just take it. And even right now, we might not be able to hear it in the camera, but we can hear it just off. We can hear lots of bulldozers digging around the ground. So development is definitely an issue for such crucial habitat for them. Yep, unfortunately, you know, like I said, it's still going on. Okay, well, let's head back to the facility and finish up. Okay, we are back here at the facility mm -hmm. to get a last few questions in. So, I'd like to know how many blue iguanas we have out in the wild today and kind of where do they live? Okay, well, so we have released over 1,100 iguanas out into the wild thanks to our conservation efforts here at the Blue Iguana Conservation. And um, we can't go everywhere, but within the places that we can go, we estimate there to be you know, around 600 in the current population today. Majority of that population is definitely on, in the eastern districts of Grand Cayman. Um, so you got your north side and your east end. But then, you know, there's a couple of them um, hanging around in Bordentown. And we don't really have that much information on what's going on in West Bay and Georgetown. What kind of conservation efforts have been undertaken to look after this amazing species? Um, we try to promote the blue iguana as much as possible out there in the community. We're in the schools, you know. We, uh, we currently have an app that we can have people download and then they can take pictures and send locations of the iguanas they see, whether blue or green, or the series, which is called the Iguana app. Um, so feel free to download that at any time. We go into the schools, we have presentations. We currently have a decent amount of volunteers that come out and help us here at the Blue Iguana Conservation. 
They help us with a wide variety of stuff, such as the husbandry, the maintenance of the iguanas. We have local vet students coming out to help us with um, blood work and lengths and measurements and weight and all that. And this program here has been running for how many years? So we, we've been running for about 31 years. Mainly got going around 2002 though. And um, since 2002, that's when, you know, the breeding has, um, was successfully established and then we released over 1,100 iguanas out in the wild. And that's an incredible achievement that not many places in the world accomplish. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having us here today, Dylan. We've really enjoyed it and meeting all these incredible blue little dragons. Oh, pleasure. Thank you for coming. Remember, you are empowered and capable of making meaningful changes every day for the future of our islands. Now come on out here and visit the Blue Iguana Sanctuary and meet some of these cool guys. I'll see you later, Climate Rangers.